All right, church, we're back um, for the Sunday school lesson for this this morning. And um, for the next six weeks, the lessons are going to be dealing with emotions. And remember, we started off last week with grief, dealing with grief. And this week, we move right into uh, shaking off fear. That's the title of the lesson if you have your book. Shaking off fear. Uh, fear. If, if you study the Psalms, what you will find, uh, we're in Psalm 91, which you know how much this psalm means to our pastor, Brother Ron, and it means to me, it's, I mean, it's a powerful psalm. It's a great psalm. We've been praying this for uh, weeks, months, you know, in, in the middle of this pandemic and for our country and for our families. Uh, but if you study the Psalms, if you look back at Psalm 90, you will see that Moses writing Psalm 90, and many people think that Moses wrote Psalm 91. It's it's uh, an anonymous, the, the author is not uh, named, but most scholars I know of think that Moses wrote 91 right behind 90, because if you read Psalm 90, 90 deals with uh, the difficulties of life. Then it moves into 91, and the Psalm deals with uh, the dangers of life. So you have the difficulties of life, which trouble comes along and we have to deal with situations and difficulties, but then you turn to dangers of life. Uh, he warns of, of, of so many things. He warns of, of hidden traps. He warns of deadly plagues, of terrors by night and arrows by day, uh, stumbling over rocks and facing lions and snakes. He's talking about the dangers of life, the things that bring us fear. Uh, as you know, as as a, a young man, as a child, and a young man, as we all do, uh, I dealt with fears. I had uh, many fears. I was afraid of the dark, as most kids are. Uh, I overcame that later. I made myself overcome many fears, like, for instance, darkness. I used to go into closets and turn the light off and close the door and sit in the darkness to make myself overcome the fear of darkness. I, I remember as a teenager, I used to go spend time with a buddy of mine and uh, he had a room way in the back of the house and we would go in there, we turned the light off and just sit in the darkness and, and to overcome the fear of darkness. I had a fear of spiders and snakes like everybody does. Uh, I made myself overcome fears of snakes starting off reptiles. I loved reptiles. I, I, I loved lizards and snakes. And I made myself overcome the fears of snakes by learning about them and knowing which ones were poisonous and which ones were, which ones were not. Then I had I had a real fear uh, over spiders. And I had to overcome my fear of spiders. I learned to where I could pick spiders up. Now, don't get me wrong. If a spider drops on me today or if a snake was to drop onto me, it would scare me. And, and especially if I did not know what kind of spider or snake it was. But I catch I began to catch snakes, even catch poisonous snakes as a teenager because we learned, me and my buddies learned that we could get money for poisonous snakes by taking them to, uh, we had an anti-venom lab there in Chattanooga and we could take them out to that lab and they'd pay us $25 a piece for those snakes to use them to get the, the venom for to make the anti-venom. So uh, I learned how to catch poisonous snakes. So my fear of snakes I began to catch snakes, and I learned to, and I love snakes. I, I play with snakes. I have a pet snake now, and uh, but spiders, to me, really, my greatest fear was spiders. So I began to learn about spiders, and and what I learned, you know, and then as I learned, I began to pick spiders up and to know which ones I could touch and which ones I couldn't. So I overcame those fears. But that, as the, in the world, that's what we're taught to do. Uh, we're taught to what the greatest fear is fear itself. We're taught to overcome fear by facing those fears and so forth. But still, fear is there. Fear is real. But you have, you must understand, church, that as believers, we have the hope and the strength through Jesus Christ to overcome any fear. We don't have to face fears on our own. We have what the world does not have. The world doesn't have anything to help them face fears. Unless they're friends and, of course, their parents. As children, we have our parents. 
but you're still going to have fear in your life. But as believers, we have the Holy Spirit in us. We have God with us to help us face these fears. We have something that the world does not have. <clears throat> so as we look at this lesson, what we're going to look at is, I think, three things in, in Psalm 91. Um, what keeps us from fear? What, help us to, what helps us to walk in confidence? What helps us to walk and to overcome fear? And of course, it's, it's God. It's, it's Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit. But as we look at this psalm, I think he's going to name three things, uh, three things that are available to us that we have in us that will help us overcome any fear. Now, I believe the first thing he tells us is this. In order to, to keep, to, to shake off fear, shaking off fear, the title of the lesson, to shake that fear off, we must look to our faith in God. The first thing he says is our faith in God, which is the hidden life. If you're writing this down right, faith in God, semicolon, hit the hidden life. I'll explain that as we go. But look at the first four verses of 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him I will trust. Surely He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Okay, he begins to tell us it's our faith in God that helps us to overcome fear. It's our trust and faith in our Father, in our Holy, in the Holy Spirit, in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I think the most important part of the believer's strength, of their walk, of them being successful in their walk, is the hidden life. And what I mean by that is their communion with God. It's your personal walk with God. Look, church is essential. I believe that. I believe every Christian, if they're going to totally succeed as a Christian, they must be a part of and be involved with a Bible-believing church. But beyond that, the most important thing in your life, the most important place you will draw strength from, the most important place you will grow, the most important part of your life as far as being successful in your Christian walk is your hidden life. It's your personal walk with Jesus Christ. It's your uh, communion with God. It's your personal time. Uh, the author here, I noticed the author, he names two addresses. In other words, two dwelling places, okay? The first place he mentions is his tent or his home, uh, his dwelling place. Look at verse 10, down in verse 10. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Now, he was probably a Bedouin, more like Bedouins, which most of the people back then in his lives were Bedouins. They lived in tents and they moved from place to place. He was probably Bedouin. He may not, he may have had a home, but what he was saying is, my, my address, my dwelling place is my home. But then he says, I have a second dwelling place. Look at verse one. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. And then jump down to verse nine. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. He's saying I, there's two places. As a believer, there's two places we can be. We can be here in our home, here in this world, with our family, with our at work, or wherever we may be dwelling at that time, here a physical dwelling place. But then we have a second dwelling place. And that's that special place with God. That's that special relationship we have with God. Sometime back I preached, um, <coughs> excuse me, I preached a sermon talking about finding that special place with God. Those, what you will find is the more time you spend with God, you're going to have some very special moments. Times when you just crawl up in daddy's lap. I love that picture. I just crawl up in my Heavenly Father's lap. I crawl up in His lap, and I draw close to Him while He draws close to me. Brother Ron was preaching on this Wednesday night. It's, it's a choice. For you to be close to God is a choice. He's always there for you. He's always reaching out for you. He's always available to you. You must make yourself available to Him. That's the key. 
He gives you choice. He's not going to make you do anything. He's not going to make you spend time in his word. He's not going to make you spend time talking to him, praying with him. He's not going to make you spend time with him. He's not going to make you crawl, crawl up in his lap. That's your choice. But church, you have that right. Do you understand that? As believers, we have the right to crawl up in our God's lap. I, I love the picture um, here uh, of the wings. I, ble I believe the wings symbolize the Holy of Holies. You remember the mercy seat during the times of, of the children of Israel before Christ tore the veil. The dwelling place was the mercy seat on top of the Ark of the Covenant where the two angels, their wings came over the cherubim and they, they touched and underneath it, there was a place there that was the mercy seat. That was the dwelling place of God. Now through Christ, we have a right to crawl right up into that Holy of Holies Crawl right up into the throne room with God. Crawl up into our Father's lap and just let him love us. It's that faith. It's that hidden life. The, the, the names found here. The, I love the names that he uses in this psalm. The names found here. Uh, they encourage us to trust God. Uh, you got the Most High, El Elyon. The Almighty, El Shaddai. The Lord, Jehovah. In God, Elohim. These are names. This is our Father. This is the Almighty Jehovah God. El Elyon, Elohim, uh, El Shaddai. And yet we have the right through Jesus Christ to have a personal relationship with him. To literally crawl up in his lap and let him love us what we love him. Faith. Then he goes on to talk about the shield and the buckler. He's talking about the armor. This is listen. This is the same armor that uh, <clears throat> that Paul talks about <clears throat> over in Ephesians. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take on the shield of faith with which you may be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's that same shield. It's that same buckler. <clears throat> it's that same armor that Paul refers back to. It's that faith in God. God gives us Everything we need to trust him and to fight against anything that may come our way. To overcome any fear that we may have. We must have faith in God. That hidden life. We must build that relationship with our Father. The more we build that relationship, the more we will overcome all the fears in our life. So the first thing he says is our faith in God. The hidden life. But then he moves on from there. Not just our faith in God. But then he says our peace from God. The protected life. You see, once you build that relationship, then you turn around and you receive the peace from that relationship. The peace, then you feel protected. You feel that protection that the Father has given you. Don't make it hard for God to protect you. Brother Ron was talking about this Wednesday night. We, if, we, if we step out into sin and we disobey we make it hard for him to protect us because he gives us choice. It's not that he's not sovereign. It's not that he has he can do or overcome anything, but he gives us a choice. And if we choose wrong, then we take our life literally in our own hands. Look at these two verses, verses 5 and 6. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. He's saying, this, if you build that relationship, if you have that faith like you should, then you will have the peace from God. You will have the faith in God, secondly, the peace from God, the protected life. You remember I said about those, those <coughs> uh, as a kid, first of all, un, do you understand what fear is? Let's, in, order, in order for you to understand what fear is, let's look at the definition of fear. This is the best definition I liked. The definition of fear is this. An unpleasant emotion caused by the belief 
important word there, the belief that someone or something is dangerous and likely to cause you pain or threat. The belief. You know, there's an old saying that, that most of the things we worry about never come to pass. It's the same with fear. Most things we fear, we fear because we believe they will cause us harm, or we believe they're a threat when they are not. And even those things that are a threat, even those things that uh, are dangerous, we cannot, we don't have to fear them because of our faith in God and peace from God. Just like, for instance, when I was talking about when I was young, <clears throat> snakes. I learned how to look at a snake and know immediately if the snake was poisonous or not. Okay, so I, although I caught poisonous snakes because I got money for them, but I knew if a snake was not poisonous. So therefore, I played with snakes like corn snakes and uh, bull snakes and uh, uh, rat snakes and uh, garden snakes. Those were the first ones I played with. And black runners, black snakes, and different snakes that, that did not hurt it, were not harmful. Now, they would bite, but they were not poisonous. They didn't have fangs. <clears throat> so, But I learned to play with those snakes. King snakes. I love king snakes. I had a pet king snake for years. I didn't care for the... Um, I didn't, I didn't care for the tropical snakes. I didn't care for the snakes that you would buy, the, the pythons and the boas. Number one, they're not supposed to be here. Number two, those snakes would grow up and be aggressive. And although they weren't poisonous, they were very dangerous because of their teeth, which curved in, and they could cause you major pain and, and major injury. And plus, of the, they were constrictors. So I didn't, I didn't fool with them, all right? So... Different story. But what I'm saying is I overcame my fear of those because I had to learn the truth. This snake will not hurt me. This snake will. The same with spiders. And again, I'm not talking about tropical spiders or, or spiders that we brought into the country like tarantulas or banana spiders. I'm talking about spiders native to Mississippi. Okay? Of all the spiders native to Mississippi, there's only two kinds of spiders that can hurt you. That would be a widow, which you have black widows and brown widows. If you don't know the difference, you need to find a brown widow because you'll know it immediately. It looks just like a black widow. It's just brown, okay? But the widows are poisonous and the brown recluse. Those two spiders can hurt you. The rest of them cannot hurt you. They, they can't even bite you. They don't have fangs big enough to bite you. So they're, they're basically harmless. Although they scare us. Why? Because of everything we've learned. The hairy little legs. I mean, it's just like a, ro a roach can't hurt you, but you don't want a roach crawling on you. There's fear there, but it's the belief. We must learn that they can't hurt us. The truth is they can't hurt us. To believe something that is not true can bring a lot of fear in your life. So you must know the truth. We talked about that. Knowing the truth, the truth will set you free. So this peace from God, this fear, there, there's, there's two types of fear. Those that are valid, those are true fears because there is something there to fear. But most of our fears have no validity. We had no reason to fear this to start with. But even those that are valid, we can overcome that fear through God. Just like Brother Ron said, I don't fear the virus, but I respect the virus. I don't want to get it, but if I do, God's going to take care of me. God's going to protect me from it. He has so far. But if I do get it, he's going to help me through it. So I don't have a reason to fear it. And by size, what is the worst thing that can happen to you as a believer? Die and go to heaven. <laughs> For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If we could ever get that in our heads, then we would fear nothing. And this is what I've also learned. From this peace from God also brings the Holy Spirit. The more you allow the Holy Spirit to have control of your life, the Holy Spirit will warn you of trouble. I could sit here and tell you story after story of the, the things that the Holy Spirit, when he has warned me something's about to happen or he's warned me that there's trouble there. Back off. You, you ever walk up to somebody <clears throat> called getting the heebie-jeebies? 
you talk to somebody and your hair stands up or you just you're not comfortable around them, that's the Holy Spirit letting you know that his that person's spirit, his or her spirit, and your spirit is not meshing because they're not the same. His spirit is evil and yours is good. Therefore, stay away. The Holy Spirit's warning you. That's not a good person. They don't have a good spirit. Stay away from them. The Holy Spirit will warn you. And I can tell you other times when the Holy Spirit is just it reminds me, you remember Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Sense. You get that tingling. I can't tell you how many times that Holy Spirit will give me that little tingling. And then I'll realize something's going on that's not right. The Holy Spirit will warn you. you and it comes with that peace from God, that protective life. God will help protect you, but you have to be willing. And you have to back up. You have to build that life, that hidden life. You have to build that personal life with him. And the more you grow, the more, more susceptible you will be to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So you have faith in God, you have peace from God, and then he wraps it up with this. It all culminates with love for God, the satisfied life. Love for God, the satisfied life. Look at verses 9 through 16. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon lion and cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set, set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is what he's saying. Again, you draw close to him, and he will draw close to you. But it's a choice. He's not going to make you do anything. Your relationship, in order for you to grow as a believer, it is totally up to you. The ball is in your court. God's going to do his part. Never underestimate God in doing his part. He will always do his part, but you have to do yours. It's just like all this other stuff. I tell people during this pandemic or during any time there's trouble, you do your best, then let him do the rest. But you do your part. He wants you to walk toward him and then he will walk toward you. If you walk away from him, he's not going to make you walk to and he's not going to chase you down. Now, he's always there. He's always pursuing you per se. He's not going to let you get far out of his sight, but he's not going to make you turn and come to him. That's your choice. But your love, he's saying, the psalmist is saying, if you love him, then he is going to protect you. He, There's going to be more protection for those who obey. and That's why... You're not judged on your sin, but there's consequences for sin. If you do something wrong, there's going to be consequences. And that's on you. That's not on him. Look, look I love this scripture. In, in, this, in this chapter, the word love is translated meaning to cling to, to be passionate. Cling to, to be passionate. Now listen to the scripture in John. John 14, 21 through 24. He who has my commandments and keeps them... It is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest, and manifest important, manifest myself in him. Judas, not as scared, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him, him and the Father. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. Again, it's a choice. But if you love and you trust and you receive that peace from him, he wants to give to you. He wants to protect you. He wants to meet your needs. He wants to even give you some of your wants. But he gives you a choice, church. You want to shake off the fear? Then build your relationship with the one who has complete power over all fear. That is your God. That is your Savior. That is the Holy Spirit that lives within you.
No need to fear. Yes, respect the virus. Yes, respect. Use common sense. Be as safe as you can. And then let God do what he's going to do. God will protect you. But take time to build that relationship and to rest in the faith of God, to rest upon the peace of God and to experience the love from God and your love for God. Church, no reason to fear. Put complete faith in your Savior, in your Father, in the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. And I promise you, you can overcome any fear in your life. I love you, church. Always remember, God is so good all the time. And all the time, God is so good. I love you. Until next Sunday.